Oh, yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Boys, we'll be boys. Okay. Mr. Thank you. 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 If your ants bite me, I know exactly what to use. Your butt? <laughs> <laughs> and then you can just throw it on the ground. What? You've done rubbing it on your bites. What if I've never done it? Well, since we're at a kind of neighborhood event here, I thought I'd start off by just singing a song from uh, the neighborhood I'm from. I'm up by St. Cloud. Ooh, yeah. This is uh, probably the first song on my upcoming album that's going to be released later this summer. Wait, what? Where the Mississippi water rolls along to meet the sock. Riverbank slopes down over gray and rosy rock. Granite City said the sign. Granite walls, prison wall. But I rarely met a quarry man in the city there at all. Not a red and broken stone lies along the railroad track. Quarry days are gone, boys, and they're never coming back. And still that pulley gives a groan. And the engine gives a roar, but scarce a soul. Quarry stone in Granite City anymore. All the ringing and the blasting we used to hammer through the day. Men went down into the pits to cut the stone away, and there were barges on the river and the train tracks that led. To the builders in the city, all in off the St. Cloud Red. Now that red and broken stone lies along the railroad track. Quarry days are gone, boys, and they're never coming back. And still that pulley gives a groan. Engine gives a roar, but scarce a soul. Quarry stone in Granite City anymore. Cause that was long ago. Time has moved along. Best stones all been taken. Industries moved on. What we got left here? It isn't like back then. They got new machines to do the work of 50 men. Now that red and broken stone lies along the railroad track. Quarry days are gone, boys, and they're never coming back. And still that pulley gives a groan. Engine gives a roar, but scarce a soul. Quarry stone in Granite City anymore. Now the drag lines and conveyors rise up high above the scree. Some engineers, they're working for the Lockheed Company. And the big box and the strip malls sprout like weeds out of the ground. The pits are all just swimming holes around the outskirts of town. Still that red and broken stone lies along the railroad track. Quarry days are gone, boys, and they're never coming back. And still that pulley gives a groan. Engine gives a roar, but scarce a soul. Quarry stone in Granite City 
anymore. Howdy, y'all. As I said, uh, my name is Emmett Doyle. I'm a local folk musician. I've been playing mostly in uh, the Celtic and old time and uh, kind of associated scenes for a number of years now, off and on. And uh, a lot of what I do is be in the uh, labor movements, uh, bard. They bring me out to play at picket lines and stuff. Playing benefit shows for all sorts of miscreants, getting into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> so, um, here's actually a song that I wrote uh, winter or two ago, and I think about this a lot, especially if I'm working construction downtown. That's what I do. I'm a carpenter, passing all sorts of homeless encampments on the way, and. Uh, I want to dedicate this song to Mayor Fry. The wind in downtown Minneapolis sneaks along over the snow. Blew the white flakes from the sidewalk onto the hotel windows glow. Red truck dashed into the city and tore through the night with a bell and the flames tumbling higher bore the ash from the fire that gutted the Drake Hotel. Oh, mama, your baby is crying. She is crying for something to eat. She's wrapping herself in a coat too big. She is crying for lack of the heat. We sleep on the bridges and byways. We sleep on the park bench or bus. The condos we build will never be filled. Their shelters for assets, not us. Who tried to blow on the whistle? Who cast it into the dark? These projects are waiting for fixing like a tinderbox waits for a spark. From the ramshackle gas line explosion to the tower fire on the West Bank. We knew that this town was slow burning down before the cops put the match to the tank. Go walk by the camps on the greenway, tell me who is deserving or not. Go walk by the crane and the scaffold, tell me who's gonna live in that lot. Go walk through the ruins and the rubble, and answer me if you can tell. Which pile of stones and burnt rebar bones was once the Drake Hotel? Which pile of stones and burnt rebar bones was once that Drake Hotel? Let's see here. Now, you always get uh, questions about this instrument. <laughs> It's a bouzouki. It's uh, basically a giant mandolin, tuned a little bit differently. So you're allowed to do some neat kind of ringing chords on it, like this. But I'm not going to do any of those chords right now. Those come later. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I could. Uh, over the course of the winter and early spring, I recorded a, a solo album. Uh, I've, I've got some material out under the band I was in, the Wooden Shoe Ramblers. Um, and uh, the building in which I recorded the, uh, the solo album was actually the one that has the plaque for the, uh, the Bloody Friday massacre during the 1934 strike. Um, how many people know about this? Got labor geeks yeah. in the audience? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, you're actually gonna enjoy the show then, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried there for a second. <laughs> Good. Um, so yeah, I would actually written this song uh, back in the summer of, I think, 2014 or so, and it had been, um, played at the Joe Hill 100 Roadshow at the Eastside Freedom Library, which got me an offer 
to uh, come down to the plaque laying ceremony um, and play the song. So I did. But then as I was uh, getting ready to do that, there was word from the uh, commemoration committee that they wanted me to censor a certain verse in the song. Um, one about how the workers after Bloody Friday, some of them uh, wished that they had rifles and could uh, fight back against the police. That was a little bit too spicy for uh, certain members of the strike commemoration committee. So they offered to uh, have me play the song but censor that verse, and then I could play another song. So I'll show you what we did with that set. <laughs> Except I'm not going to sing the censored verse, I'm going to sing the actual verse. This winter's been a hard one, out walking on the line And the kitchen and infirmary, they've also served the time For months now we've been striking, teamsters and the rest For months now we've been striking, but they haven't beat us yet So rise up for the union, don't give way to gloom Can't you hear the marching feet, they're beating out their doom Or hear the young ones crying, neither sign or pine We'll see the times get better when we hold that picket line. When first that I moved out here after serving in the war, they said there's work for every hand, you never need be poor. But the winter found us standing, asking work beside the wall, and there's scarce enough to go around to keep a home at all. So rise up for the union, don't give way to gloom. Can't you hear the marching feet? They're beating out their doom. All hear the young ones crying. Neither sign or pie. We'll see the times get better when we hold that picket line. Remember how last winter Coleman won it fair, and on that day, way last May, we won the market square. Now they got us in the holding pen. Try to keep us down, they can keep us in the stockade, but they'll never hold the town. So rise up for the union, don't give away the gloom. Can't you hear the marching feet, they're beating out their doom. All oh, hear the young ones crying, neither sign or pine. See the times get better when we hold that picket line. Those citizens' alliance boys, God damn them all the hell. Likewise, to Olson's guardsmen and the city cops as well, who shot down us in Baylor out on the market way. I wish I had a rifle, I would give them all the same. Rise up for the Union, don't give away the gloom. Can't you hear the marching feet, they're beating out their doom. All oh, hear the young ones crying, neither sign or pine. We'll see the times get better when we hold that picket line. Winter's coming fast now, the stores are getting thin Each passing dawn is coming on, we're closer to the wind No legion vigilantes, no knob sticks anymore We'll win ourselves a union town this year of 34 So rise up for the union, don't give way to gloom Can't you hear the marching feet, they're beating out their doom All hear the young ones crying, neither sign or pine We'll see the times get better when we hold that penny line. Yeah. And then immediately after that, my friend Ben Egerman, who was a rank and file worker at the uh, UPS hub, decided to uh, dedicate the next song to uh, all the officials and bureaucrats in his Teamsters local. <laughs> <laughs> and we started singing this. Oh, the company's so good to me. There's no more Reds in the union. I'm as respectable as can be. There's no more Reds in the union. The company to me seems fair They work me late but I don't care My kids complain that I'm not there But there's no more Reds in the union 
I'm paid the lowest wage on earth. There's no more Reds in the union. I'm paid exactly what I'm worth. There's no more Reds in the union. The company still to me seems fair. I forgot this verse and I don't care. My kids still complain that I'm not there. There's no more Reds in the union. It's been a couple years. Well, we never talk about workers' rights. There's no more Reds in the union. The boss says that it leads to fights. There's no more Reds in the union. And our leadership has always said that folks who talk like that are Reds. So we listen to the boss instead. There's no more Reds in the union. Each year we have a swell affair. There's no more Reds in the union. The bosses and their friends are there. There's no more Reds in the union. They give us brats, they give us beer. But one thing to me seems unclear. Why do we eat this well just once a year? There's no more Reds in the union. We've got a union that brags about preventing strikes. There's no more Reds in the union. And they leave the boss to do as they like. There's no more Reds in the union. And if these sellouts hold the keys and all they want is labor peace, then how will we ever slay the beast with no more Reds in the Union? I ask you, if those sellouts hold the keys and all they want is labor peace, then how will we ever slay the beast with no more Reds in the Union? So, uh, as I've mentioned once or twice now, I was in a, a band called the Wooden Shoe Ramblers for some time. And uh, the way we actually got our start was, uh, well, I guess in one sense, the way we got our start was uh, a group called Alt-Right Minnesota came to town and decided to try to storm the state capitol. So us and a bunch of our friends stood on the steps stopping them from doing that, and it turned into a several hour long standoff, so we ordered pizza. And then we started chanting pizza to the people, death to the Nazis, and singing Bandiera Rosa and all you fascists bound to lose at them, which was very fun. Uh, and in a certain sense, that was the first performance of the band, because we were all there and we were all singing. Um, but in another and much more actual sense, uh, the first performance of the band was a benefit show uh, for the rail workers that were being railroaded, pardon the pun, uh, for the lac Megantic derailment, which is actually not very funny at all. Um, one time I was playing this song, and, a, and a, a terrible awkwardness occurred. I came to a part where I have this kind of ringing crescendo, and everyone thought that the song was over, and so they got up and started clapping. And I don't know if they were listening to the lyrics, but they, the, the train had just crashed. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, so we'll try to avoid that this time. But no, uh, the Lagmigantic Derailment, for those of you who don't know, was back in, oh, I think 2013. Uh, and it was a preventable rail accident that was caused essentially by poor maintenance on the railroads and cutting back every safety standard they could until there was just zero tolerance for error. Uh, the workers involved actually did everything they could to attempt to prevent uh, the accident and mitigate the harm, including driving a locomotive into the burning town and getting these oil cars out of the town at great risk themselves. Um, but what had happened was that a train carrying oil derailed in a small Canadian town um, right on the main street uh, right during a folk music concert at the coffee house next to where it derailed and killed 47 people oh. and unfortunately the things that caused that accident have still not been solved in the railroad system either in Canada or the US and attempts by rail workers to strike and demand resolutions to many of these problems have been defeated by congressional action Coming down the track, 
its wheels of pitted iron and its barrels long and black. Its barrel cars are long as night, blacker than the crow. Riding from Alberta to the Gulf of Mexico. Looks we'll be here for a while, and that's nothing new. The North Star Line is always stalled when the oil train comes through. Been that way these past few years ever since the boom began. Riding from the back and shale and the Athabasca sands. I heard there was an accident in a line out in Quebec. In the town of Lac Megantic was an oil hauler wreck. Said it came in without warning in the small hours of the night. Was screaming on the rails, and then the air was full of lights. Old cars on old tracks, just one conductor on the shift. The MMA had cut its costs, it was in the name of thrift. He switched off the job in on with an engine fire to kill. But those brakes gave out past midnight, she came rolling down the hill. Down in Lac Megantic at the New Music Cafe. The people crowded in to hear both Duke and Rickard play. They were singing to the old chanson La Vie et la Mort. Without thinking on those railroad tracks that ran outside the door. She was moving fast and faster down the main line in the night. Bells were deadly quiet and her wheels were smoking white. And the ground shook like an avalanche when she hit the bend downtown. Oh, that sky was raining fire when the oil train came down. bloody smoke. The ground was still burning where the oil train had broke. For 47 dead and gone, they'd ring the chapel bell. When she rode like the pale horseman, and what followed her was hell. Train is three miles long, coming down the track. Its wheels are pitted iron and its barrels long and black. Those barrel cars are long as night, blacker than the crow. Riding from Alberta to the Gulf of Mexico. Right through here is where they go. Right through here is where they go. Song like Can't Scare Me or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's see here. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you a, a song about uh, the forces of peace and of the working class triumphing over the forces of war. So right before the war in Ukraine began, I wrote this song over was what was at the time kind of the opening battle um, and the greatest Irish naval victory in modern history. Uh, the Russian fleet wanted to uh, conduct training maneuvers off the coast of Ireland, and Irish fishermen decided that they didn't want that to happen because it would scare the fish. And ultimately, the fishermen and the fish one, which is not a thing that usually happens for them to both win together, but this time they did. So. <laughs> Come furl your sails and I'll 
I'll tell you a tale of the greatest of all Irish captains and his proud victory out on the salt sea in glorious nautical action. When Russia, she rolled her fleets over our shoals for conducting some training maneuvers. Then Pat Murphy from Cork to the challenge sailed forth with an old fishing boat for a cruiser. We've no submarines on this island of green, no warships at all worth discussing. But the king of the waves are the fishermen brave, since Pat went to take down the Russians. He said, no way in hell will you fire your shells over Porcupine Bank and the sea bite. For those lovely blue whiten at this time are biting and putting them off wouldn't be right. For Pat and the boys had read up on the noise how the sonars, screws, and munitions would play hell on the whales like an ear full of nails and put them in such a condition. We've no submarines on this island of green, no warships at all worth discussing. But the king of the waves are the fishermen brave since Pat went to face down the Russians. Armed with their nets and their radio sets, they made up a plan for assembling. Off of Robert's head with a banner that read, neither the White House nor Kremlin. For if those big Russian arcs spoke of Lenin or Marx, then you'd think it was just a red herring. But since the Union is dead, now they ain't even red, so Pat and the boys would be fair. We've no submarines on this island of green, no warships at all worth discussing. But the king of the waves are the fishermen brave, since Pat went to face down the Russians. Now the warships were done, for their big naval guns could not handle Pat Murphy's commotion. And that big Russian fleet, it beat a retreat, and it sailed away into the ocean. You may talk of your Nelson or anyone else whose battle armadas are scurvy, but the king of the seas holding admiralty is your man who you call Patrick. We've no submarines on this island of green, no warships at all worth discussing. But the king of the waves are the fishermen brave, since Pat went to face down the Russians. We've no submarines on this island of green, no warships at all worth discussing. But the king of the waves are the fishermen brave, since Pat went to face down the Russians. that they can they'll sell me a suit and they'll cut off my hair and they'll send me to work in tall buildings and it's goodbye to the sunshine goodbye to the dew and goodbye to the flowers goodbye to you I'm off to the subway I must not be late. I'm going to work in tall buildings. stand between when I went to work in tall buildings and it's goodbye to the sunshine goodbye to the dew goodbye to the flowers and goodbye to you I'm off to the subway I must not be late I'm going to work in tall buildings 
and it's goodbye to the sunshine, goodbye to the dew, goodbye to the flowers, and goodbye to you. I'm off to the subway, must not be late, I'm going to work in tall buildings. set list here, but I'm already starting to tear it apart. <laughs> well, a couple weeks ago, before I started the current job I'm at, actually this was the great terrible irony of the whole situation, I'm currently working at 